I'm Father Wilmer Tria. I am a Catholic priest uh, from the Philippines. I'm working right now at Ateneo de Naga University as a faculty member. I teach philosophy and then I'm also the director of the university press. So I'm in charge of the production of academic books. And at the same time, I'm also the director or the CEO of an NGO called Consuelo Chito Madrigal Foundation. Uh, the foundation is engaged in uh, helping the poor for poverty alleviation. We provide housing and also finances for the microfinance. Uh, we have around 7,500 members right now. And then whatever money we generate, uh, through these uh, activities, we provide scholarships for students who wish to study social entrepreneurship. I always believe that participating in this event is enriching. So while I know that I can share some of my experiences and ideas to the group, I can be mutually enriched by their sharings and Coming here was really a discovery for me. I didn't know about the story of the CDC, of the Uni, Unitiera, and the rebellious, radical attitude of the people. It's for me so inspiring. The dialogue between the North and the South is more of a metaphor for me. Uh, the North and the South really speak about two different people uh, two different, with two different cultures, visions. And uh, I'm really interested in this because this is a, a actualization of what I have worked and what I have researched uh, in my academic life. Um, I work on Thomas Kuhn and his concepts of paradigms and paradigm shifts. And for me, this is the real world now, that um, we really have to be aware of the existence of the other. We have to create a subjective or mental space that they exists. And hopefully this mental space can be proportionately uh, created in the physical space. Spirituality is, for me, very personal. And the moment you share that spirituality with others, you create the religion. And the moment it becomes a religion, it can become dangerous. Uh, it's good. Uh, religion is like a, a shared spirituality. And you need to share your faith with others to keep the fire burning. There's a r real need to be with the group, with the group, with the with the community. But on the other hand, uh, religion can also leech on power. And that's the danger of religions becoming state religions. So spirituality, which is private, which is, which is not private, but personal, uh, ought to be self-critical and be vigilant, be aware of this danger. And spirituality helps the ego to be decentralized, to the ego to stop thinking about the self, but to start thinking of, about the other. The birth of the other in my ego is actually the beginning of justice. Injustice is blindness of the existence of the other. Um, we have an interesting uh, native word for spirituality. It, it means, eh, the word is buot. Buot means inner life. And when you add the prefix ma, so that the word becomes mabuot, it means to have a rich interior life. Uh, but sadly, the current understanding of the mabot is simply
to be kind and to be docile, to be obedient. So I think this is a construct of the colonizers to make us understand that the Mobo'ot is simply docile so, uh, and that made us perfect subjects of colonizers. But if you go back to the original Mabo'ot, it actually means uh, having a rich interior life, which means spirituality. And it does not remove the virtue of courage because courage is an embellishment of justice. Uh, if you have that virtue of justice, if you love the other, if you love the society, if you love your community or your family, then you are ready to fight uh, in order to protect that community. Knowledge is, the, the weakness of knowledge is that it easily is attracted to the sensible, to the tangible. And in my understanding, uh, because I'm uh, working on philosophy of science, uh, my reading is that people can easily be fascinated by technology. And in our country, the fascination to science and technology leads actually to consumerism. Uh, the Philippines is known to be the text world uh, people, like people keeps uh, using cell phones and uh, communicate through the short messaging, the SMS. And if you will visit the country, you will find big malls, uh, Mall of Asia, uh, super malls, and so on and so forth. So poor people who want to forget about their poverty are the ones that are attracted or I call them victims of consumerism. So this is the type of knowledge that is not critical about uh, what's happening in the environment. So what I'm saying is uh, we have to teach people to be critical and then to transcend the material world towards the transcendent, the spiritual world. The guarantee of justice, uh, I mean the consequence, the true test of justice is peace. When people exist peacefully, then we can presume that there is justice. Philosophers would say that most of the time, violence is an expression of injustice. So what, I say, what I'm saying is the great indicator of justice is peace. Now, how can we work on it? Uh, it will really have to start with, with conscience, uh, awareness of the other, and then awareness of the society, awareness that can develop social conscience. So other than the individual conscience, a person must develop social conscience. And with this, uh, a person is ready to develop what I call social justice. So actually the church is promoting not only the personal justice, but social justice, which is a social virtue, which is a virtue that is not only found among individuals, but among institutions. Institutions have visions, have mission and core values. And what our objective is to ensure that these institutions from the biggest, from the smallest to the biggest, should really have social justice as its institutional virtue or core value. We know that the political borders were actually made by colonizers defined by by colonizers like the case of uh, the middle east of africa 
and perhaps also here in Latin America. And we discovered that even along those political borders are peoples that are marginalized, that are not recognized. So uh, what I do believe is other, uh, instead of political borders that were defined by the colonizers or maintained by these states, um, the border should be more spiritual, mental, uh, something that is defined only by respect, uh, awareness, and at the same time respect of the otherness of the other. The tendency of the self, of the ego, is to assimilate the other, to make the other as my part of my being, part of my usefulness. I think this is a, a good attitude so that we can uh, respect and provide this right to existence of other peoples, especially people that do not share our mentality, our culture, and our language. I do believe that uh, working for justice cannot be done by just a handful of people. Uh, my, my faith, my trust is if we can continue to create leaders, uh, servant leaders, not leaders that, that lord it over other people, but leaders who behave and act as servants, leaders who sleep in the bed of suffering so that they can easily understand the, the feeling, the language, the world of the other. Uh, the world of the other is the world of pain, the world of struggle, the world of suffering. So good leaders can only be good leaders if they are faithful to this uh, uh, listening attitude towards the plight of the other.